No, it's like, well, like you say, this is uh, getting back on the topic at hand, and like you say, it's, it's strongly related to the HTC one. Um, I, I tend to agree with HTC sentiment here. Uh, you know, uh, it, it's a shame that instead of trying to out-compete and out-innovate everyone, Apple is choosing to just attack everyone through the courts. You know, that that, that is a shame, because... Uh, it, it's. Didn't think Apple got pissed off in front of the iOS 5 that they knew that they were having to catch up feature wise with their Android? I think they knew with iOS, when they were developing iOS 4. I think they knew then. I think they knew before they put the first iPads out. When they were like, when they were, when they were building the iPads and they were working on iOS 4 and, and all of that, I think when they were doing that, there were people at Apple that could see the writing on the wall, but I think there was dissension in the ranks. I think half of Apple was living in denial of no, this isn't happening. We, you know, it's like uh, it's and the, and the other half was, guys, this is a bigger problem than we think it is. We really, really need to be addressing this like now. Right. <laughs> and you know what? I want to give a positional statement on this. I always talk about licensing out, and I always still argue licensing out OS 10. But I don't think Apple needs to license out iOS, as in, you know, let them, let no, the HTC no. Honestly, the only thing I think Apple needs to do for, uh... Is open up software. They keep it on iPhone, but open up the software and pick many more doors and inroads to other software partners. Well, no, and one of the... A, they should open up the software, and... Uh, I, for your right. I'm not making it open as no, 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 no. Yeah, you're, you're talking now, about like participation with third party. Right, right. They need to get rid of the rule of third parties cannot duplicate Apple functionality because if a third party comes up with a better solution and the customer wants it, who's mm -hmm. that makes the experience on the device better for the target consumer, and that can do exactly. nothing but help Apple. It, it won't hurt them if it's a bad idea, bad experiment. The end user won't go after it, and that doesn't hurt Apple because Apple didn't do it. It's some third party doing something stupid. It, it's a win-win for Apple if they throw that rule out. The other one I think they should throw out is they should get rid of the draconian control. It doesn't make sense to license iOS, but I think it does make sense to license access to the marketplace. Uh, allow, uh, allow, allow other devices to tap in and give Apple money. That makes yeah, sense. Isn't that, isn't that the truth, man? <laughs> yeah. I mean, they could... Man. Yeah. Uh, again, I'm going to say the word. I wonder what the opportunity cost is on that. Like a measurable... You know, like a competition and use apps. For well, it, apps. it's one of the reasons, like what we were talking about in PC the other day, the reason the Kindle is dominating the ebook market and, and almost nobody has a press chance to really actively compete with it is because my Kindle book works on... Almost everything. Pretty much the only thing the Kindle experience doesn't work with at this point is a Linux desktop computer. It works with Android. It works with anything running Alien Dalvik. It, it, and so it basically it will follow around all over the place. Okay. The i experience, you know, FaceTime, the iBooks, the Sun, that works on iOS and in some ways on a Mac. But that's it. It works on this tiny bubble within the industry. If FaceTime would open up, if you know, if if I had an iPhone and I and I like FaceTime, let's let, let's pretend right. I have an iPhone and I like FaceTime, and I want to call my friend that has an Android or a Windows Seven or a Windows computer or a Linux computer or, or so you know any one of hundreds of millions of devices. Let's say they don't understand the Church of Apple and they don't subscribe to all things made by Steve Jobs and yada yada. They're one of these other people. By virtue of the Apple philosophy, I can't talk to them from the Apple universe. And that's that that, that basically makes the... You're hitting it. I think that's a, a, a very good point you're bringing up. Um, isn't it, 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 it? You just... You, you said it in, in, in like the uh, in, in so many words. And what Apple is saying with FaceTime, you just brought up. If you were allowed in, and you were saying like, let's let Linux users get in and all this other stuff. Apple's response is no. This is our user experience. We want to do 
we want to do it this way, and, and, it, and it's for us. But in the open world that is Android and, and within Linux, innovation always comes, and you have creativity. People uh, counter programming to each other, and this is better, this is better, i.e., KD and, and GNOME, and all that sort of stuff that, that has risen from uh, the Linux foundations. That Apple has got to understand that while they may think FaceTime is great right now and it's all in this insular world of Apple, that the clock is ticking before the competition catches up and surpasses you and then adds more features because of Android allowing other third parties to say, you know what, you kind of got it right, Android, but you know what, if you did it like this, check this out. And all of a sudden, Apple find, finds himself, like with iOS 5, and say, damn, we got to do notifications this way. You know, we need to do... X, Y, and Z this way. And it's going to be catch up from, from that, that point on. And if they mm -hmm. open it up, just like you're saying, and, and, and it's all these other platforms and allow other people to create and yes, mimic, just like you said, where who cares if it copies a native function of the iPhone? If that, if that third party application does it better and has a better idea, let them do it. Yeah, it doesn't hurt anybody. And it just makes their platform stronger. I, I, I have never understood their, it, it's, it, it, they have to micromanage it. It has to go through them. And, and as a result, everything's in this constant bottleneck. It, yeah. It's just, it, it, it's a sad thing. And, and I honestly, um, I think they smell that. Because I have seen a big, if you've watched any of the Apple advertising on the TV, especially with FaceTime, like they're, they are pushing FaceTime. Like we have FaceTime, yeah. we have FaceTime, we have because I think they smell that come next year, come next Apple keynote, nobody's gonna yeah. give a shit about FaceTime. It's gonna That's be right. it, 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 they're, they're, the reality is oh, there's yeah. three if not four competitors right. to FaceTime that aside from doing what FaceTime do, they're agnostic. Like I can talk from phone seven to Android to Blackberry, which means I don't care what the person on the other end has. <laughs> Exactly. You know, it's so it's so correct. I, I just can't I can't in my mind find a good reason to say I'm going to create this great technology, but I'm going to just keep it for myself. And I, I, I just don't get it. You know, that, that, and that would be such a powerful thing for Apple because Apple is very innovative, and they and they could. It's, it's like the old Steve Jobs mentality of the clones, where people just misunderstood Jobs. Jobs is fine with clones. He just wanted it at a fair price for Apple. And I guarantee you, HTC or whoever, or Linux users, or, or, or what have you, a third-party vendor is going to say, you know what, if that price is also fair for us, because you do have the market share right now, I'm going to pay it, Apple. I'm going to pay it. I'm going to bring my user base to your platform, because you you, you opened it up to us. And, and Apple will have that much more user experience, you know, whether it's through some other device or what have you. They're still using an Apple technology. Well, no, and, 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 the, and the zealots are going to make the argument, well, you know, Apple's trying to control the experience, and they can't develop their software they, to run they, as they well. People, as, Apple users do not understand. They do not understand. And I and I always argue that in the, old, in the old Apple that I know, Apple went out of its way to do things, especially in software. Yeah, that's what we exposed all that about. They yeah. went out of its way to do things, okay? And that philosophy wasn't what killed Apple. There was other things that I know I always repeat that because <laughs> the whole that whole effect of catering to trying to get more involvement in the platform was not what killed Apple. They had just had tremendous inventory part problems. But basically they created some cash flow bottlenecks yeah. that kind of did them yeah. in. And, and, man, if they would just <sighs> embrace that idea... And, 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 and honestly, I, I would argue that they don't... Eat, it's like the, the argument the Zealots will make is, well, why should Apple spend time making their software for Android and Linux and Windows and so on. It's like their job is to sell Apple stuff. Like, they don't have to they do that. Make, they can All they have to do time. is make an SDK, say, here's our kit... Go build with it. That's that's all they have to do. They just need to make this little kit. Of course they have, but they need they need to remove the regulations. Yeah. And, and exactly. And, and what you're saying is like my counter to it is that the Apple pundit of today, in my opinion, 
of their user experience and what they want is skewed. The, and how can it be a great user experience in the entire evolution of, of iOS from, from where it started to now that it, it was severely deficient in many in many applications the operating system applications itself. Not that, I'm not talking about applications application. I'm talking about and how it multitask and basic features like MMS. And, and well, other if things. we're it's honest, different. what iOS was designed basically to be was a was an a media player that happened to have a browser that would then do everything through that. So it wasn't intended to ever do multitasking or something. It was basically just supposed to be this do one thing and everything happens. That's how it was designed. That did that isn't how things unrolled. The industry went down a different road and Apple kinda had to go with the industry. Yeah, and Apple had to fight with and I think we're arguing about since two thousand seven. It was like uh, no jobs, it doesn't make sense going just to the browser. You know, no jobs, this doesn't make sense either. And and you would see Apple acquiesce. That's why I would say if you bitch loud enough, Apple will acquiesce because they, they and, but that's the thing. That, to me, and I've used them, iOS, uh, it, w it was not a pleasant user, ex user experience. And Apple users, I think, like Apple puns I hear is they say, oh, I go to another device and I put my finger on it and I trace it and see how fast, uh, like this thing follows my finger. Are you seriously going to tell me that how something tracks to your finger dictates a device that, 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 that you're going to purchase it? I would say that that consumer just has an odd, in my opinion, a very well, that, odd... That, that, that was uh, a uh, test that was done initially because when, when, I, when, when the G1 came out, it was like if you put your finger on it and it did, da, 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 there was a lag. Because the G1 was so ridiculously underpowered. I would argue if you do that today with like if you go buy an Evo and an iPhone and you do them, I, I would argue they largely track the same because they're very comparable well, hardware. Wait, wait. I, but I don't think that's a, a point. Let's put it this way. I, as a program for instance, when I, I, I've done dragging on, on the screen and it was like there's like an older application. The Apple way would have taken this window with all of its content and moved it from, from here to here. I programmed a program saying that this is ridiculous use of resources, just just for some pleasing aesthetic crap that that doesn't do any anything of real functionality for you. So I would take that, rim out basically the actual content in it, and it would simply move a shadow of the window. And once you dropped it, it returns. Okay. Now that to somebody. Like with a tracking would be oh well you know that here. that would be useful for the way you move things around the desktop on iOS. But what they're talking about is like I open like say I open a web page and there's like 50 billion pages down there. What they're talking about is the smoothness as as I'm scrolling with my finger. No, no, it, no, this is not. I'm not talking about scrolling. I'm talking about uh, what I've heard words. They, they didn't talk about browser scrolling. I've scrolled browsers on every phone. They all behave the same to me. But no, I know that there is. I would. I will say that Apple does. Um, well, no, actually, no. I mean, my 3GS didn't have that great response sometimes either. I mean, there would be a delay. I'd have to double tap sometimes. And, it just but, depended what you were doing. Yeah. Yeah. I, the thing of it is, is that it's that's not going to make a difference in productivity. The, uh, 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 in other words, an aesthetically pleasing thing to your eye is not going to make a time difference in your productivity. And I guarantee you, most Apple users on, on iPhones, and people can tell me I'm wrong, but in my opinion, they're not buying it because, oh, iOS is so smooth. I don't, I don't frankly believe that it's that smooth. I've, I've seen enough and, and owned enough of the versions that I don't think it's any smoother than my HTC Evo. Or there there are thing. some there are some parts of it that are smooth, but they're completely, in my opinion, offset by the cumbersome nature of, like you say, getting from here to there, design to there. Yeah, yeah. It's it's, like it's, yeah let's say if I'm in it, I mean, it's like, I, I think you, you know, I don't need to reiterate what you just said, but I... I, I I know the big seller for, for the iPhone right now is the ecosystem. I, most people I talk to that all bitch about the performance of iOS say, man, but I really love this app. I really dig this app, which has nothing to do with how fast the, 
something is tracking your finger or the retina display. Then well, no, no, and, and, from, and see, uh, uh, some of that directly goes to your favorite word of opportunity cost and other things and Apple having market share. One of the things that is implemented by the Apple marketplace right now is anything you sell there is not allowed to be a different price anywhere else. It has to be the exact same price in the iOS marketplace as it is everywhere else. The way 90% of companies get around this is the name for it in iOS is XYZ and the name somewhere else is ABC and the name somewhere else is DJB. That makes sense to do right now to cater for Apple. The moment that doesn't make sense, they're gonna go, our application, there, there's a few like Pandora is Pandora is Pandora. Pandora is Pandora everywhere because they're pushing that brand. But there's several applications they're XYZ on Android, they're XYZ on iOS. It's the exact same application, but to comply with the licensing terms, they had to rename it, uh, and so on and so forth. The moment the opportunity cost of messing with that exceeds the number of people who can't find your companion piece of software, they're gonna say, fuck it, this is what it's called. If Apple doesn't want it, then it's not available to Apple. <laughs> and that will turn on its head overnight. Well, hey, Apple's already lost a market share then. Um, an Android user could, could definitely say more people prefer to use Android. I mean, at this point, you could, you could, you could with, with, with a reasonable, uh, a reasonable amount of, of, of logic conclude that I, I, I would I argue so it's right, that we can say a consumer experience that there are more users that are using Android and are pleased with the of Android versus iOS. I, I, I would argue the industry is surging that way, but I would also argue at this exact point. It's like here, here, you and I have switched hats today. <laughs> this is really funny. Like, I, I would argue at this point, if I walk into a Verizon store or an AT and T store, and the rumors are by the end of this year a Sprint store, um, fifty fifty. If I'm a non technical person, depending on what exactly I'm looking for and what I like, if I'm walking out of that store with Android or an iOS, uh, it's like it's. Uh, while there'll be more Android devices in the store, you know that doesn't necessarily mean I'm gonna. There's a greater chance of me walking out with the Android device. It's it's at the end of the day, it's going to depend what I'm. I would say mathematically, I, there is a greater chance because mathematically speaking, if you are a consumer looking for a phone, chances are Android has many more styles to offer you and many more features to offer well, you. And, and, and that is. Versus and that is why iOS is putting out that uh, cheap uh, iPhone, you know, the, the last year's model for 49 bucks, because that was one of the ways they were losing a lot. You know, the iPhone was 200 bucks. There were a swarm of free to $99 Android phones. And it was real simple. You're putting there, it's like, well, this one does everything this one does, but it's half the price or free. You know, it's like, oh, that's an easy sell. You know, <laughs> it's like, it's like it didn't. To, to, to most of the consumers, they don't care what logo's on it. That's what they're looking at, especially in today's economy. Um, personally, I think to really turn that tide, Apple needs to figure out a way to get a 100% subsidized iPhone. I, I don't know. If I, I don't think. I, I don't think the hardware price is the problem. I, I really think that, like I told you last night in our Mac versus PC deal. That I know now, ten people that are leaving iOS to go to Android, and it's not because of the price, because they're buying expensive Android phones. Uh, it's the limitations of, of, of the software and, and, and the customizations that they are seeing. Well, with, uh, and they upcoming. they didn't address all of those with iOS five. Do you think they can wait a year to address all of those? No. It's, it's, I think if the games, I, I really think in the game of chess in terms of features, it's already over for Apple. I don't, they, the product cycles have already, um, the chips have already been laid. Unless they, Apple, unless Apple changes the cycle like mid-year, 
versus how it releases now. Yeah, basically they're going to have to. Think that's that, that. That's what I think. I agree with you. I think at this point to stay relevant in this industry and not quietly drift off over the next two years, Apple is going to have to release iOS six to the consumer no later than March, which means they need to have it in developers' hands by Christmas, so they can be ready for it. And, and, and Apple users, I know, can laugh all they want now and all this other stuff. And hey, no problem. I, I don't care. And if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But I, I, I don't think so. But I, I can tell you that that uh, um, I watched that Google I/O and Android. Uh, Google is pumping. Just well, no, and the other, the the well, the, uh, the other, uh, the other thing here is everybody's forgetting Google still hasn't released what they're going to actually be selling this holiday season. Apple has shown everybody what they're going to be doing this holiday season. That's they're right. like, they're like, I, they they are doing iOS five for this holiday season. Google, on the other hand, is releasing ice cream for this holiday season, and if it has half the things they've been promising. I'm sorry. It makes I iOS five look dated. I was impressed with watching Google I/O and, and, and ice cream. I was I was just sitting there. I was like, it reminded me of when I was sitting there, uh, you know, I, at, with, with Apple time, and I saw Windows NT and the philosophy, the original philosophy of Windows NT, and my jaw just dropped. It's the same thing as Google I/O, and I hope that Google doesn't do what Microsoft did in that. You know, the Marcus totally killed the vision of Windows NT, in my opinion. Now, you know what? We, we've gotten entirely off topic there, but that's okay. Because honestly, that's one thing I'm seeing. Uh, with what Google's been doing lately, it's like they've become this weird hybridization of Apple and Microsoft and everyone else. And that, you know, they're, they're saying, this is the bit that worked well from here. Assimilate. This is the bit that worked well from here. Assimilate. It's, it's like they become like the board. They're just kind of assimilating all the pieces that work <laughs> and going. We will assemble them into our. <laughs> we will be the perfect species. We will assemble them over here, and you will have no choice but to assimilate into the Google them. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah. 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 which is hard to compete with. That really is hard to compete with, whether you love or hate it Google. Is, it is. I just. It, they're, they're, they're simultaneously innovating and borrowing from everybody else. That's a dangerous combination to compete with. <laughs> I, I think that, that Google had the right idea out of the gate um, with Android. Now, I remember Apple users laughing at Google. Remember when Android first was announced and all of the Apple guys, when you oh, this is going to be nothing, it's going to suck. And it'll never overtake the uh, iOS. And all of a sudden, bam! Now it's okay. Now I, I, now I, I, I knew I knew Android was here to stay when I went yeah. and played with the G1, which I wound up buying. But I bought an unlocked one. Uh, but I played with it, and I took a look at the specs that Android wanted, and I took a look at the specs of the G1, and realized like a lot of things had basically been cut in half. And I looked at how it was performing and what it was doing. I'm like, okay, this is this thing with its arms tied behind its back and blindfolded. If somebody actually lets this thing free, which will probably happen, doesn't stand a chance. <laughs> that's which is what wound up happening. That's just. Hey, yeah, okay. well, I, I personally don't want. To, I personally don't want people to skew what I'm saying is that. Apple loses, Android wins, or, or vice versa. I, I don't. No, no, the, 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 that's the other thing. When you have a monopoly of anything, when you have a monopoly of anything, it's a bad thing. No, but that's I, the thing. I, I, this is one of the. Re I, I'm with you. Open up a little bit, and, and hey, and, and Android could borrow some principles from iOS as well. It's just I don't see Apple budging at all on the third party front and trying to, to bring native features to iOS. And, and, and that's really I, what and, they need to do. Having a hard time making things native for itself, you know. It's like, come on. So. Well, no, see that that's the thing. I would I, I th this is I don't like Apple. No, nobody here will ever accuse me of liking Apple. But I, for the reason you're saying, competition is good. Competition helps prevent monopolies. It keeps everybody on their toes. It keeps the industry moving. Uh, and I'm kind of sad from the. I want competition to be strong going on because see Apple just completely and totally screwing the pooch here because even though I don't like them that doesn't mean I want them completely gone from the industry 
I, I just, they're, they're, they're not the choice for me. But the fact that they're just, you know, well, hi, we're obsolete and we're going to continue to be obsolete and we're not going to do what we need to to actively compete in the changing market. It's just like, you know, we, we, we've named three things they could easily do without compromising anything that would let them stay relevant for probably at least another two years and give them I think time. It's gonna be, I think it's always going to be a big clip. I really do. I, I mean, the mobile world, this is not desktops. I do think that Apple will have far more market share than the Mac platform ever has achieved. Um, but but the, uh, the arguments that we're presenting is pretty much to the pundits and the Apple purists uh, that... Uh, snub Android or constantly make excuses or invent uh, financial numeric numbers to try to continue to <laughs> make it a, a, a war of some sort. Which, of course, it is a competition, but I guess it's, it's, it's pre the preventing of having to eat crow from the, the inception of Android and all of the thumbing of, of Android and, the, and this and that and the continued attacks against Android from Apple pundits and, and this and that. Well, no, and personally, I think that was one. You, you rarely see Steve Jobs make a public mistake, but I think that when he got on stage and you know did all that Android bashing, yeah. and that that was what can only be called a mistake because he has now made this about Android must fail for Apple to win, and when he did that. That that's just that I don't. There's not an elegant way for Apple to to back off of that, aside from pretend he never did it. You know, yeah, you're right. Jobs himself did. He did not have to put in the keynote how many applications uh, Android Honeycomb had. You're absolutely right. You know, and, and, and that's funny because there are pundits that keep saying, "Well, this is not supposed to be." There again, I'll mention John Gruber because he always will say, "Well, this is not really." For Android, Apple has to lose. For Android to win, or vice versa. But you're, you make a very good point. Jobs himself makes it a, a, an extremely competitive thing. And and what else are Apple loyalists? Are, are, are very. Are, I don't want to say loyalists, but Apple purists, because yep. that was you know in all through. <laughs> people have to look that up through our, our my older videos and how that that term came to be. But um, <laughs> Apple purists uh, just. Uh, I had lost my train of thought. Anyway. But uh, the, what else are they going to? What else are they going to do when they see Jobs himself up there? Yeah, basically they parrot the whatever Jobs so, says. Yeah, he made the distinction himself. And, and what's funny is that Apple and, and Jobs himself made the distinction when it was when it was Apple and they were kicking ass versus DOS and all that other stuff. But when they lost to Windows, oh well, now. Uh, for, for Microsoft to lose, Apple has to win. You know, and then, uh, then this this kumbaya mentality came up because obviously you're not going to freaking you're obviously not going to unseat them. So uh, I don't know. Right? It's uh, uh, it's it's an interesting position for them to be taken. Is is the only way I. I have was to. shocked that they actually went up there and showed the bumblebee up there for Honeycomb. And I was like, wow. Okay. Well, no, and like in in uh, uh, and. It's and, but Google I know this too. I think Google. Oh no 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 Google, 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 no no no. Yeah. I I I there's as much bashing at that. You know, it's like Google. I, I think every I/O Google does some demonstration about how that. Well, and it, that goes back to what we were talking about initially. Like originally, iOS was designed to go through the browser. That wouldn't have been such a bad idea if these mobile browsers could actually fully work with, but the reality is this is an underpowered device with a lightweight it's like, I'm sorry you're not gonna have the resources you have on your desktop and so and, and the reality is doing everything through JavaScript can slow down a dual core or quad core desktop computer it's like it doesn't stand a prayer's chance on this little mobile device with less than a gig of RAM I'm sorry it's just it's never gonna <laughs> It's never going to have that seamless experience until those yeah, things... Yeah, I'm saying WebOS, even though they're still touting you know, programming HTML, like the PDC and all that other stuff, getting into C++ uh, programming and this and that, so... Yeah, well, it's like, Java's great, and, and I mean, JavaScript's great, and HTML and all of that's great, but at the end of the day, uh, 
it's resource intensive. And if you're, if you're dealing with minimalistic resources, I mean, really, for that to be a practicality, for the magical HTML5, everything's an app in the sky world to be the practicality we want it to be, um, the $49 mobile device needs to be a quad-core to opt-core with two gig or more of RAM. And I'm sorry, we're not in that world right now. We're not going to be for another one to three cycles of Moore's Law. So that, that's an unrealistic uh, world. It, it's great to design for, you know, to be ready for it when it gets here, but to be dependent on it at this point, eh. <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, let's wrap it up at this yeah, point. Yeah, I'm going to say, I was going to say, anything else we want to go into or do we want to just stop think, right I here? I, I think we're there. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> uh, it's Apple Zealots, right to care of, go fuck yourself. And <laughs> I, I, I should bleep that. That's like, that's, that's mean. That's like, ah, uh, peace out all. <laughs>